I am Rebecca Rich, Principal Scientist at Cartera. Today is a description of SPR and how it's used to monitor binding events. SPR is surface plasmon resonance, which is made of two elements. One is a surface. One binding partner is attached to a surface and the others float across it in solution. Plasmon resonance is how we monitor these binding events. It's the optical detection method for measuring these two binding partners. Now the binding partner attached to the surface is called the ligand. The binding partner that's flowed across it and stays in solution is called the analyte. With SPR, we can measure how the analyte binds to the surface and how it unbinds to the surface. We also call this analyte associating to the surface and dissociating from the surface. This is the optical detection system for the Cartera LSA biosensor. The heart of this is the gold layer. On one side of the gold layer is buffer through which we flow analyte and ligand is attached to that gold layer. On the other side of the gold layer is a glass prism. Light is shown through the glass prism and it's reflected and measured by a detector. Now, if all of that light is reflected, then the signal we obtain would look like this when we plot intensity versus angle. All the light's reflected, so we have a very high intensity across all the angles. But what actually happens is that at one particular angle, the light is converted into a plasmon wave, a wave of electrons that resonates through that gold layer. So the angle at which this happens then is not reflected to the detector. Instead, it produces a dark spot across that range of angles. And that dark spot, when you plot it as intensity versus angle, it produces a dip. And what we can do is we can track that minimum of that dip across different angles. Now, this dip is actually produced by measuring the refractive index of the buffer on the other side of that gold layer. So that dip can go shift to higher angles or to the right when we increase the refractive index of the buffer. Ways to do that are adding salt to the buffer or adding glycerol. Both of those increase the refractive index of the buffer. We could also decrease the refractive index by diluting buffer, uh, diluting it with water, for example, shifts the dips significantly to a lower angle or to the left on this screen. For monitoring binding events, the exciting thing is that binding events also shift this dip. For example, if we attach ligands to the gold surface, the dip minima move to a higher angle and then move even farther across this screen when analytes bind to the ligands. So we can monitor how the analytes bind to the ligands and also how they unbind or dissociate from the ligands by tracking where that dip minimum occurs across the range of angles. Now, the instrument records dips, but what we as biosensor users see are binding responses. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the dips and where they fall in that range of angles translates into what we see as binding responses. So here on the left will be dips plotted as intensity versus angle, and on the right are binding response plotted as a function of time. So at the start of an experiment, we have a bunch of ligand immobilized on the surface. We have a dip minimum at a starting angle and a binding response that's generating a baseline. There's nothing happening yet, but then we begin to introduce analyte, which binds to the ligands. The dip minimum begins to move to the right to a higher angle. The binding response begins to increase. Now at this point in the interaction, we've reached a plateau in the binding response and the angle is not changing at all in its position. At this stage of the experiment, the interaction is at equilibrium. The same number of analytes are binding to the surface as are dissociating from the surface. And that's what generates that plateau. Then as buffers float across the surface, analyte begins to dissociate, the binding response begins to decrease, and the dip minimum angle begins to shift to the left. As analyte continues to dissociate, the binding response returns back to baseline and the dip minimum 
returns back to its starting angle. That's a very brief high level introduction to SPR and how we use it to monitor binding events. If you have questions about this or are interested in the Cartera LSA biosensor, please contact us at this email. And thank you.